Hey, what's up everybody? It's me, Kyle. I'm back again. And of course, I'm doing this on behalf of NFC Maker Pro. We're going to be looking again at how we generate the actual image files. Okay, so last time we left off, we've managed to get just the background and the first layer of the ghost in. We're now going to finish that in this episode, and I'm going to show you how to generate all 10,000 of them, store them properly, save the files, the right file types, get all that ready so that you've then ended up with a essentially a database written in a, a CSV file for all of your metadata and all of your art. At that point, you have the project and then everything else is just about getting it on NFT Maker Pro and getting it ready. Um, let's carry on with that then, guys. Thank you again for joining me. All right, I really appreciate all the support this project is getting um, and I really, really hope you're learning a lot from this. I do a lot of work to make sure the series is smooth and I cover as much as I can. Um, if you've got any suggestions, oh, let me know. But without further ado, let's get into it. So last time, as I said before, we've done the background and the body type. What we need to be thinking about and what you should be thinking about in your project is, as you did before with the, the drawing parts, you need to consider the order in which they're going to appear. Okay, so for me, as you can see, I've always been doing that by the way that I put them in the list. So I'm trying to keep everything consistent, let it flow naturally. And let me move that across a bit for you so you can see all the code. There you go, right? So that's why I've done it this way. So mine goes background, body type, body color. So background, then body. Then we do the eyes and the mouth. And the reason for that is that they then go on the face and then I put the hat on top of the face. <laughs> When you say it like that, it's a pretty funny thing to say. Um, and then finally, if there's a little boo, we added them in. All right. And, you know, for your project, you might have loads more attributes. You might have less than this. But whatever it is, you need to consider that in, in depth, especially if you've got interest in things like um, maybe they've got a helmet on, right? Maybe they're a motorcycle helmet or a... Um, you know, racing helmet, something like that. You wouldn't want to then put a drawing of like a big pair of sunglasses necessarily underneath the helmet, right? Maybe that would look okay in some scenarios, but you see what I'm saying? Um, if that happens, you're going to need to put a lot of if else and, and you're going to have to think really carefully about how you do that. I will try and cover that in this, but for now, let's get the base thing done. First thing I'm going to do then is I'm going to use this print statement just so that we can compare what it shows in a bit more detail. So let's add in the hat type, then we'll have the hat color, and I might speed this up, I might not, depends on how quick I can type. And then uh, we don't care about the folder. Right, so we'll have body type, and then finally body color. And let's just run that again. And then you can see, yeah, field, translucent, red, cheeky, obviously we've not drawn any of the rest of it yet. So let's, let's do that. Right, literally speaking, because this is reasonably simple, what we should be able to do, and remember, we've already dealt with all of that rarity percentage and all that, we can focus on drawing here, which keeps the code nice and clean. Um, what we then need to do is essentially, you see this code here, what we're saying is the base ghost is the first image, so that's our background, and then each time we call this method, um, the two combinations, so the layer, essentially opens up the image. In this case, it's the body color. And then just look at the folder structure again. So in body, and we know that this is the translucent type. So if we go in there, and you can see there's the translucent folder. And then it takes the body color as the next slash. Imagine that like a folder structure. And you can see, as we know, it's red. It just picks the red one and then adds .png on the end. Uh, note how that's capitalized and I've capitalized them in the files. I'd actually recommend keeping it all lowercase. It, it depends how confident you are in keeping everything aligned. If you're really confident you can do that, then by all means put the capitals in, you know, what you need to. But, you know, ensuring it runs correctly, it's probably easier to stay with them lowercase. Anyway, right, what do we need to do next? So literally, if you grab that line again and you drop it below, 
we want to do the next thing, which we said before was the eyes. So if we go sources, eyes, you can see they look like that. So what we can do is simply change this to say eyes. And if you wanted, you could put, change that to eyes. What this is actually going to do, if you're interested in the code, is this variable called layer here is going to get overwritten during the, the run. And it's going to be replaced with the new image, which is going to be the eyes. It doesn't matter. Um, unless you were trying to do something really complicated, you might want to like literally define them. So for example, it would be body image like that. And then you would have eye, uh, something like eye image. All right. Um, and what that would do would keep these variables so you could call them later. Um, I'm not going to do that because I want to, again, I want to keep this nice and simple for everybody. Um, so let's set that back anyway eyes and then if you if you guess right yes we put eyes in here and then because if you can see we've only got one depth on the folder there we don't need anything else we can delete all that and that should work so let's try it there you go so they're the cheeky eyes and uh, yeah it's drawn that on there okay we're getting there next then we want to do the mouth so same again check how we set this up and similar sort of situation. So the, the folders in lowercase. And again, this is why before I was really asking you to think about your folder structure, because look how easy I've been able to keep this really clean, really clear, no problem. Um, again, as you start to add more complexity, for example, I had a thing here, I'll, I'll show you. If we go into the hats, especially with the crowns, I had this problem. So with the crowns, I was going to do silver crowns and gold crowns with different I could probably open that up there you go there's the crown image there's the diamond there's the emerald I was going to do this in silver gold maybe bronze and other stuff but that would have meant I'd have had to code this to kind of deal with that and at the time I wasn't I didn't want two things I didn't want that sort of extra if else in there because it's it's adding more but it would have also meant the metadata would have had another choice, right? So I would have had to have um, hat type, the option for crown, then I've had to add hat color would be gold, silver, bronze, and then maybe the accent color would have been diamond and emerald. Okay, fine, that's fine, right? But then I've had the same thing in my metadata for things like the baseball hat, which only go down one layer. So you can see, the decisions you make can complicate it a bit and you have to think about it more. But equally, I could have solved that by having the hat color as gold diamond. But then in the metadata that you'll see later, it would have said gold diamond and you know, anyhow, back in here then, um, we've added the mouth. So we want to add in mouth like that. And then again, we're going to take this. This is the bit of code that actually uh, paste it on top of that image and because we've been using png files with a transparent background that's how the layering works so then we're going to do mouth what else have we got left we've got hat so think about this one again see if you can do this before me give it a pause okay i'm assuming you paused it <laughs> you might not have and that's i'll say that's cheeky but i'm, I'm not upset with you i, I understand you know, I'm, I'm not mad about it um, but, <laughs> but then, yeah, it's going to look similar. Remember, we've got two layers. We've got hat type, and then we've got hat color. All right, so there we go. And then finally, the last thing we're going to do is, oh, this one's interesting, right? So we've got a little boo. Now, you'll see in here, there's two ways you can solve this, right? So the first thing you can say is, you can say if uh, little boo, is equal is exactly equal to see how we've written it here in the in the CSV file so just look just like that we can say do this thing so to do nothing right in fact what we'll say is there we go um, take that and then we can say so what we're saying is if lil boo is not equal to none, then we want to actually draw it, right? So we can go sources, 
Lil Boo. Oops. And then we can get rid of that because there's only one layer. And then we can delete up to here, like so. And then just put in Lil Boo.jpg. Now, if we go down to an example where we do have a value, uh, yeah, we got the yellow one there. Now, I only did yellow. Now, I could have done other colors. I wanted the Lil Boos to be quite rare anyway. And so uh, I think I set them to 10%. And so I didn't want loads of options because then you'd have like, whoa, that's like a 1%. You know, it would have added, again, various ratios that, you know, I could have changed, but I, I like how it went. If it's yellow, it's going to be not none. So it'll run this. If it is none, this code will basically get ignored. So let's try that. And there you go. Excellent. You can see there's no little boo and it's drawn the ears on which is the Halloween set with the white rabbit ears. You've got the grin mouth, the red, and then if we do that for another one, let's try 16. There we go. You can see this guy's yellow is in the field gold at night, and then we could find another one. Let's try one in the throne room. Uh, nighttime, yellow, cheeky. Let's try a non-translucent one. Here you go. This one here, 364. So I think that's going to be 363 here. Uh, if you remember, the arrays start at zero. There you go. Okay, perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Right. So you can see throne room, uh, standard body in green, winking forward, <laughs> happy face, magic hat in green. So perfect. Now, I'll give you one with a, with a Lil Boo. So we'll say something like this, comma, yellow. And then, yeah, we can see one there, conveniently 365. Um, so if we put in 364 and run. Hmm, so we got an error there. I wonder what it was. Ah, okay. Purple, right. So this here should actually say purple. And you can see how easy it is. You make a tiny error like that, and you don't catch it early on in the testing. That might happen on iteration number 150, and then you've then generated a load of art that you've got to delete and it's a nightmare. So again, really important to test this stuff and check it out as much as you can. But anyway, let's try it. And there we go. You can see, whoops. So yeah, there you go. There's one with a the little boo. He's got the, uh, the big smile, pirate hat. Amazing. Now, the other way we can solve it is what I did. Now this is a horrible bit of code. <laughs> But basically, I have this none layer, which is transparent. Now, that's obviously not a beautiful solution. I'm literally getting the computer to run, drawing nothing, which is a bit stupid. But solved the problem, and it meant I didn't have to do this if statement here. It's up to you. I prefer this now. It's better code. What we've now done is we've got something that can draw booze at will. So I'm going to show you something really cool that we can do. And I, I love doing this, by the way. I absolutely love it. If we go and we say for A in range, and let's just pick a random range um, because I don't want to show you the ones we've already done. Um, let's go 500 to 530. So that'll be 30 boos. We'll say our row is equal to, just grab that and I type in if I don't need to. Find me the row at that location. So it's going to tick through 500, 501, 234, up to 30. And then we're going to say create single boo image our row. Right, let's run this and I'll show you something cool. Look at it go. I just think that's amazing to watch. <laughs> it's just so cool. I think it's one of the most rewarding moments of these projects is when you when you get it to do that. It's it's such a fantastic moment. Um, and I, I don't know, I just love seeing them all appearing. Uh, on Mac, you can just quit that and it will get rid of them. But there you go. That is the art ready, okay? We, we're so close now. The last thing we need to do is instead of base ghost.show, we need to, right. So we're going to come in and we're going to do base ghost.save like this. And we're going to make a new destination called complete. So this is where all our complete images are going to go. It's going to keep it nice and tidy, makes it easy to do that. 
And then the first thing we're going to do is give it that folder. So if you remember before, um, if you wanted to, you could put in um, which folder you want to put it in, but you can see all of them are in A. If you wanted to split them over 10 different folders, 20, 50, whatever, you could. It would keep your directories easy to navigate, depending on how powerful your computer is. I'm going to just put them all in folder A for this tutorial, as I'm not actually going to generate all of them you know, for the purposes of the tutorial. All right. When I get my more powerful computer, <laughs> we'll be fine. But um, yeah, I don't need to stress the system to give you what you need. All right. So anyway, put your folder in or don't or just call the folder. And then we're going to have to put in another slash. And then we're going to put the file name that we want to give it. So this is where we finally take that. And you can see in here, that's the first row here all right and we're going to say yeah file name and of course we need the classic dot png uh, there you go and then finally we're going to save it as type png like that so if we run this let's see what happens Okay, there's something I missed. You have to create the folders first. This method here won't build folders for you, but it will save files in the folders. All right, so new directory, we'll call it complete. It's about exactly the same. And then inside there, we'll do new directory called A. Now, if you're going to split them across loads of stuff, um, you might want to put B in here. You can also do this programmatically using the OS library. Um, again, for speed, I've just done it manually. And now if we run it, okay, something's happened. If we go into complete, A, whoa, here we go, look. And then if I open that back up, should be able to see we've got a ton of booze in there. And that's because we were running 500 to 530. And you can see that they've started at number, oh yeah, it's still running that 501, 02, 03, etc. So absolutely brilliant. There you go. That is how. You generate them and you can see naturally the next step is to simply run that from zero to 10,000. You'll then have all of your booze and it'll all line up nicely. For the purposes of this, I'm going to run it from zero uh, to 500. Okay, so I'm going to delete all of these now. In fact, uh, yes, I am going to delete all of these now. Let's just do that. Move them to bin, job done. And I'm going to go from zero to uh, 499 which will give me zero to 500. And for the remainder of this series, I'm gonna be working with 500 booze and not the full 10,000. Okay, here we go. You can see that that will be printing out what it's doing, which it is doing really well at that. And Bosch, they're all done. And this is why I've kept the files quite small as well for the point of this. And you can see that if we go down now, we've got all the way from boo one all the way to do 499, which is just there. So one to 499. So we should have actually stopped at 500. So let's just run that again. I will say I did that deliberately just to put the focus on how careful you have to be with these arrays and these numbers not lining up because obviously this starts, this has a header row. That's the first thing. But that's then row two is actually row one, but in the array, that's row zero. So you've got three kind of problems. But as you can see, doing that has set it to 500. So there you go. 500 booze are ready. And in the next part, we're going to get into NFT Maker Pro and get this stuff uploaded, get your account set up, get your wallet in, get it all ready to go, get the metadata. And then the remaining two episodes are going to be how you set up the Minter everything else related to that. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've learned a lot from this. I've had a great time making it. And thank you very much to NFT Maker Pro for making this possible. Thank you and have a good rest of your day.